guys, welcome back to my channel. So today, let's discuss the gross anatomy of the diaphragm. What is the diaphragm? The diaphragm is a dome-shaped musculotendinous muscle that tends to separate the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. Let's take for instance that this is the what? The diaphragm, okay? Now this is the thoracic cavity and this is the abdominal cavity. So you are having a muscle called the diaphragm that lies between the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity. So it tends to separate the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. The diaphragm is referred to as the thoracoabdominal diaphragm. So having defined the diaphragm, let's talk about the openings of this diaphragm. So there are various openings of the diaphragm. We have the large openings and the small openings. But before talking about the smaller openings, let's talk about the large openings that we can see in this word, diaphragm. So the large openings are three, which includes one, the vena cava. Then the second one is the also phagus. And the last one is the iota. I have a mnemonic to remember it, which is what? The VOA, which you can also say voice of. And let's take the first one, which is the word, the vena cava. So the vena cava is seen at the what? At the tendinous part of the diaphragm. So this is the tendinous part of the diaphragm, or you can call it the central tendon of the diaphragm and this is the muscular part of the diaphragm remember that i said that the diaphragm is a what a muscular tendinous what muscle okay so this is the tendinous part and this is the muscular part we also have the sternal part of the diaphragm okay and the coastal part of the diaphragm so this is the coastal part of the diaphragm so, the vena cava, which is the first large opening that we can see in the diaphragm, is seen at the what? At the tendinous part or the central tendon of the diaphragm. So, this is the what? The vena cava. So, in discussing the openings of the diaphragm, there are some outlines that we can use to what? To explain it better. The first one is the what? Is the situation. The second one is the shape. The third are structures that are passing through it. And the last one is the function as regards to its words, its contraction. which is the word the situation so the vena cava is seen at the word the tendinous part of the word diaphragm at the level of t8 so this is what an invisible t7 this is t8 this is t9 we are having t10 we are having t11 and finally the t12 so the vena cava is seen at the level of the word the t8 at the central tendon of tendinous part of the diaphragm so the shape of the vena cava is quadrilateral in shape. So this is quadrilateral in shape. And the structures that pass through this vena cava includes one, the inferior vena cava. The next one is the phrenic nerve. Now this is the right part of the diaphragm and this is the left part of the diaphragm. Therefore, this is the word the right phrenic nerve. And the last one we have is the lymphatics of the liver. So remember that the shape is quadrilateral in shape. So that's for the situation of the vena cava and also for the shape and the structures that passes through it. Then this function as regards to contraction is what? It is in dilatation of the word diaphragm. So the next one is the osophagus. Let's discuss the osophagus. So the osophagus is seen at the what? The level of the right cruise of the diaphragm. 
So this is the right cruise of the diaphragm, Why this is the left cruise of the diaphragm. So this is the osophagus, okay? That C are the right truths of the diaphragm. So let's label this the osophagus. Then its situation is seen at the level of the T tank. Okay, of the right truths of the diaphragm, and its shape is what is elliptical in shape. So it's elliptical in shape. Now for the structures that passes through the osophagus, they include the vagustrum, the right vagustrum, and the left vagustrum, and also includes the words, the left gastric vessels. So this is the left gastric vessels, the left vagus, and the right vagus. So its function as regards to contraction is what it is in the constriction of the diaphragm. So let's go back to the last large opening of the diaphragm, which is the iota. So this is the iota. So this iota is seen at the level of the median acute ligament. Okay, so this is the median acute ligament. The iota is seen behind the median acute ligament, okay, at the level of the T12 of the diaphragm. So, this is seen at T12, the osophagus is seen at the T10, and the, the inferior or the vena cava is seen at the level of T8, okay. Now, the next one is the shape of this iota. So, the shape of the iota is rounded. So, the iota is rounded in shape. Then the structure that passes through this iota are one, the thoracic duct. And the next one is the azygous vein. So those are the structures that passes through the what? The iota. And there is no changes as regards to the function or as regards to contraction of the diaphragm. So the iota has no changes, unlike the vena cava and the osophagus that aids in the dilatation and constriction of the diaphragm, respectively. So these are the what the openings that can be seen at the at the diaphragm. That the large openings that can be seen at the diaphragm. So let's talk about the small openings that can be seen at the diaphragm. So having discussed the large openings of the diaphragm, let's talk about the small openings of the diaphragm. The first we are going to have is the what? The superior epigastric vessels. So these are the superior epigastric what? vessels. So the superior epigastric vessels are seen at the space of the word larry between the words the xiphoid word process and the seventh that is between the slip of the xiphoid process and the seventh coastal cartilaginous slip of the diaphragm. So that is where the superior epigastric vessel so is the musculophrenic nerve. So this musculophrenic nerve is seen at the ninth coastal cartilaginous word slip of the diaphragm. Then the next one is the lower five intercostal vessels and nerve. So this lower five intercostal vessels and nerve passes between the what the coastal origins of the diaphragm and the transversus what abdominus muscle. So the next one is the subcostal vessels and nerve. So these are the subcostal vessels and nerve. So these are the subcostal vessels and nerve. So the subcostal vessels and nerve are seen behind the lateral acute ligament. Remember that this is the median acute ligament that has two parts, the median acute ligament and the lateral acute ligament. So this is the lateral acute ligament. So this is the lateral acute ligament. This is also the lateral acute ligament. Okay? So the next one is the sympathetic trunk. So this is the sympathetic trunk. So this 
is the sympathetic war trunk. And this is the subcostal vessels and nerve. So the sympathetic trunk is seen what behind the medial arcuate ligament. Okay, so this is the medial arcuate ligament of the medial arcuate ligament. Please don't be confused. So this is the medial arcuate ligament. So which simply means that here is the medial arcuate ligament that has two parts, which is the medial arcuate ligament of the medial arcuate ligament and the lateral arcuate ligament of the medial arcuate ligament. Very good. So the one that passes behind the lateral arcuate ligament of the medial arcuate ligament is the subcostal vessels and nerve. When the one that passes behind the medial arcuate ligament of the medial arcuate ligament is the sympathetic trunk. So the next one we're having is the greater and lesser splanchnic wall nerve. So this greater and lesser splanchnic nerve pierces the crews of the diaphragm. Now you know that the diaphragm has two crews, which is the left crews and the right crews as I've labeled here. So this is the greater splanchnic wall nerves or vessels. Why this is the lesser splanchnic wall nerves or vessels? So the greater and the lesser. Splanchnic nerves. So same thing as this one. Then the last one is the left phrenic nerve. Now the left phrenic nerve is seen at the left copula of the diaphragm, which is seen at the left cruise of the diaphragm. Remember that this is the right phrenic nerve that is coming from the what? Venal cava that's seen at the central tendon of the diaphragm. Okay, that's the right phrenic nerve. Remember that this is the right part of the diaphragm, while this is the left part of the diaphragm. So these are the structures or the small openings that are passing through the diaphragm. Let's take it all over again. The first one is the superior epigastric wall vessels that passes between the wall, the space of the larry, okay, which is seen between the slip of the zygoid process and the seventh costal carcinogenous slip of the diaphragm. Then the next one is the musculophrenic wall nerve, which is seen at the ninth wall costal carcinogenous slip of the wall diaphragm. Then the next is the lower five intercostal vessels of nerve that passes between the costal wall surface. Remember that this is the costal surface of the diaphragm. That's the costal part of the diaphragm and the transversus abdominus muscle. Then the next one is the subcostal vessels of nerve that passes behind the lateral arcuate ligament of the medial arcuate wall ligament. Now the next one is the sympathetic wall trunk that passes what behind the medial arcuate ligament of the medial arcuate ligament. Now the, less, the next one is the greater and lesser splanchnic nerve that pierces each cruise of the diaphragm. So it pierces the right cruise of the diaphragm and also pierces the left cruise of the diaphragm. Finally, we are having the left phrenic nerve that is seen at the left copula or the left cruise of the diaphragm. So these are for the structures or the openings that you can see in the wall. The next one we are going to talk about are the clinical correlates of the diaphragm. Let's talk about the diaphragmatic hernia. This is a condition in which there is an abnormal opening in the diaphragm. And when this occurs, it allows abdominal organs to move into the chest cavity, which is not proper. Okay? Now, there are two types of diaphragmatic hernia. We have the cogenital diaphragmatic hernia and the acquired diaphragmatic hernia. So, the cogenital diaphragmatic hernia, as the name implies, cogenital, is present at birth. This occurs due to improper development of the diaphragm during fetal growth. It can also lead to serious respiratory problems because the lungs may not be fully developed. Okay? Then the next one is the acquired diaphragmatic hernia. This diaphragmatic hernia occurs later in life, typically due to trauma. Trauma such as um, car accident or surgery. And this can also be related to an increase in abdominal 
pressure. Some of the symptoms can include respiratory distress. We can also have um, a bluey skin color due to lack of oxygen, rapid breathing, and poor feeding in infants that have congenital diaphragmatic hernia, chest pain, and lots of discomfort as well. The treatments can include repairing the opening in the diaphragm. This can actually is often necessary shortly after birth for those that have the congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Another treatment can include supportive care. This includes uh, mechanical ventilation and other interventions that would stabilize the breathing of the patient or the baby and also to support the lung development in newborns. Diagnosis can include prenatal ultrasound for congenital diaphragmatic hernia patients, chest x-ray, magnetic resonance imaging, or CT scan. We have come to the end of this class. My name is Joy Oni. I am a basic medical lecturer and an online tutor. I have an educational channel on YouTube where I post most videos on anatomy classes. Please, if you enjoy my videos or if you enjoy my lectures, please do well to subscribe to my channel, like my videos, share my videos so that more people are going to work, like my videos. Thank you very much. See you guys in my next class. Bye.